For those of you that don't, <clears throat> let me tell you that desktop application development is not dead, at least not in the JVM. It's quite uh, alive, <clears throat> though some people still don't talk about it. So the whole point of this talk is to demonstrate uh, that the Gryphon framework is up to the task for developing applications on the desktop. And it's quite enjoyable, it's quite fun. And if you already know a little bit about Groovy, and if you know some of the stuff behind Grails, then you'll find that Gryphon has many refreshing ideas coming from both. Uh, this talk, I usually give it with my wife, Michelle Ruiz, but sadly she is not here with us today. Uh, she was yesterday. And the talk is actually uh, two people talking together about how we can create an application and we're going back and forth. So this is a nice discussion, but now we'll try to do it on my own. So we'll see how it goes. And now we have this. So there are my three different areas. One is a scroll pane that contains a list. The second is just a panel that's a placeholder for the moment. And the third one is another panel with another, as another placeholder. Notice that I'm making use of MIC layout that is probably the best layout that exists out there for Swing, and there's also a port for JavaFX in case you're wondering. Uh, if you're doing layouts with grid back layout, please stop hurting yourself. Switch to a better layout. MIC layout is that better layout. In worst case, use form layout from JGoodis, which is also very great. Anyway, with this, we have three elements. So let's see them in action. I have several uh, aliases for my commands. Instead of typing Gryphon, I just type G. And run app, just in case you're wondering, I can also do this, RA. This will be expanded to run app. Or I can just do app, A, which actually stands for app, which is an alias for run app. So I just type less and still get the same behavior. Yeah, what type when, when the, the command can do this thing for you? If it understands that those little uh, letters, those small things, then it should work. Okay, so now we have the address book information, the, the application with the three elements. Good, I would say. So the layout working. Perfect. So now let's, the next step will be to put some buttons here. Let's, let's put some actions. For example, let's create a new contact, uh, save it, delete it and print out the information that it contains. That will be a step number three. Oh, actually, yes, the menu bar and buttons. So now we see in the view two elements new here. A menu bar that contains menus and menu items, and the buttons. The nice thing about this DSL is that the the hierarchy, the structure of the UI is right there in front of you, uh, your your eyes. If we were to do this in plain Java, then we had to create a components in perhaps in a helper method, and then set up the layout, and then call each one of them, say them probably in in uh, temporary variables or a list or a map, and then attach them to the container. What's nice about the builder is that it knows that the menu bar is the current container when I'm inside menu. And when I'm calling menu item, the current container is the menu that I have here. So it knows that these are the children, and they will be added to the menu, the menu will be added to the menu bar, and the menu bar will be added to the top container. There's nothing else that needs to be done. So here I have the menus, here I have the buttons. Notice there's some repetition here, the names. Yes, I know, we'll see how to fix that in a moment. So let's run it again. Let's see. Uh huh. There we see the menus and the buttons. Right now, they do not do anything, they are not reacting to our input events. But at least we know that setting up those nodes work. Next step will be to put some actions on it. Let's see, if we are select new, I should get a printout. If I click on delete, I should also get a printout. Step number four. We get this now. 
We change from using simple text to something called new action, save action. This is one of the con things that come from using convention over configuration. And these actions are actually backed by a swing, a Javax swing action subclass. So you can set the name, the small icon, large icon, description, tooltip, and whatnot. You may be wondering, who creates these actions? Well, they belong to the other component of our base MVC group, which is the controller. And this is the, the, the second element that we're going to see. And notice that we make use of the same action here in the menu item and the button. This is just a standard groovy, uh, standard swing stuff, reusing an action. So let's go into the controller. And we get this. Um, actions in a controller can be written in two modes. Uh, like we did in, in Grails 1, 3, and previous, they will have to be closures, closure properties, or you can have them as methods. Now, I know that Grails added the support for methods as actions in controllers in Grails 2. Oh, guess what? We did it in, back in Griffon 01, 3.5 years ago. We rock. So, doesn't matter which, one you, which way you choose, closures or methods, it will work. If I change this name here to something else, that will be the same name by convention that has to be used here. OK? So let's see that. Let's run them. I remember the only changes is that we're uh, setting the actions in the controller and making sure that we make use of the actions in the builder, in the view. So if I click new here, I get the correct printout. Now if I select dump here, I also get the correct printout. So the actions are working. Good. Perfect. Uh, but what about these names? They are in English, but we are in a Spanish conference, and I thought it's weird that I'm speaking in English. Uh, we have internationalization support as well, and that will be the next topic. The next topic will be uh, how, do we ch how can we change these things? How can we change, perhaps, uh, these labels and titles up here? Let's see. That's step number five. And the controller stays the same. No need to change that. Let's see the view. Uh, the view now differs here. We're asking the application. There's always an application instance that you can access from anywhere in the MVC members, models, views, and controllers. The application instance is referenced by the app variable. And the application is the only one that can resolve internationalizable messages. So we ask for it. We ask get message and we give it a key, a resource key. And if no value is found, then it will throw a no such message exception. But I know this value exists, so there's no problem. Under the title boulders, we also do the same thing. App, get message, and that's it. Where are the resources located? Go into this special directory, Griffon app, internationalization, and then we see messages.properties. Here are those keys, application title, context label. Those are the things that we see here, context label, application title. All right. So what about making the actions uh, aware of the Spanish language or the German language, which I happen to have here? Well, it's just a matter of adding a local definition to the, the same uh, file name. In this case, there will be messages underscore es for Spanish, or messages underscore DE for German. And by following the conventions, then we can define different names for our actions. What are the conventions? Full qualified class name, address book, address with controller. Then action key, this, is a sp uh, this always has to happen. Then the capitalized name of the action, in this case will be new, save, delete, and dump. And then some properties. The property that we want to change now will be name. And now you can see, yes, new and nuevo, and save and salvar. Uh, we will also add accelerators for the menus. 
Notice that the English version, we also have accelerators as well. And if I show you the German version, well, the names and the accelerators change as well. Perfect. Uh, I will run now this application in English still, so that we know that the accelerators for English are working. Let's see in a moment. There they are, the accelerators. Okay, so let's see it in Spanish. I think, as a matter of fact, there is an easier way for me. If I run Griffin Shell, I will not pay the penalty of starting the JBN every single time, but I still need to change Git. So let's go into the place that I have this thing set up. Shell one, come on, address book, yeah. Here I'm going to change Git. Okay, so let's set a property here. The property is user language, and the value will be es run app. So Griffin Shell is our interactive uh, command tool. And yes, the titles have changed, the buttons have changed as well, and the menus, including the accelerators too. Nice. All right. So now that we have the basic of internationalization, let's start adding more meat into our application. Let's see a list for the contacts. I think that is the next step. Uh, that will be a step six. Let's see the view. Now, the change that I have added is here right in the middle. <coughs> Following naming conventions, we will generate a form for each element that, or for each property in our contact that we want to edit. We will put a label on the left side and a text field on the right side. Now, I will also use binding. Whenever I type something on a text field, the value will be transferred directly to the property of the bean that is back in that form. Now, binding is a nice thing to have. And interestingly, we set up the binding in a mutual way. That means it's bidirectional. Bindings in, in Groovy, by default, uh, follow just one direction. It depends if it goes from the source to the target or the other way. But if you set mutual true, then it doesn't matter. So for this to work, we now have to uh, see what are the contexts of this contact uh, model or DTO. I don't want to say domain class because Griffin does not yet support domain classes like uh, domain classes in Grails, GORM. There is an incubating plugin for that. So domain classes forthcoming, not yet. So this is a simple POJO. Contains some properties. We have equals and hash code just to make sure that uh, it behaves well when added to collections, which we will do. It has a nice to a string implementation, so we know the name, last name. And this is just for helping us iterate of all the properties, like we did here. OK. So let's run the application again. We shall see the form in the middle. And there we go. Aha, notice that thing. We're running in development mode, so we don't transform uh, special characters that are <coughs> beyond the ASCII definition. We do this in production mode. In order for this character, which is the end tilde, the end, to be correctly translated, we have to add a setting in our configuration. Let's do it right now. Um, if I go into configuration, build config. Ah, there is native to ASCII, so it's weird that it didn't take into account. Okay, hmm, weird. 
It works in, in production mode, trust me. OK. Now that I have the DTO and the form, I can display a list of them. That is the next step, if I'm not mistaken. Step number seven. Yes. In the view now, the only change that appears is this. I now refer to a model. That model is something amazing. It's coming from Glacelist, which is the other third-party library that will recommend you guys to use if you are still doing a swing development. If you have to work with tables or lists or trees and you are tired of creating custom table formats and dealing with all the complexity, do yourself a favor again and install Glacelist. Glaze list provides an observable list. It's a list that will publish events whenever its content changes. Even when an element changes inside, the list can be aware of that. So you publish changes, and then the, uh, the list model or the table model, tree model, can be aware of those things and react accordingly. So what we're doing here is just make use of a list model. And I will introduce the third member of our group, the address book model. This guy defines the same properties as the DTO. Why? Because the DTO is not observable, but our model is observable thanks to this AST transformation. Those of you that were yesterday on my transform AST transformation talk may recognize this guy. This is how we make this full class completely observable. And then the, here is the event list that I was talking about. It comes from Glaze lists. Uh, we make this a thread safe list that this is just a basic event list, nothing more. And I add a new contact to this list, so at least we know we have one element inside the list. Uh, for this to work, I had to install another plugin, which is the Glaze List plugin. I didn't say it before, but the MIG layout support is provided by a MIG layout plugin. How can you install plugins? Easy peasy. There is a command called install plugin. Give it the name of a plugin and probably a version number. How can you know which plugins you have access to? List plugins. Do you want to know more information about a particular plugin? Uh, plugin info. For example, plugin info glaze list. <clears throat> and there we go. At least in Griffon Central, we have three different releases. It is compatible with the Swing Toolkit. And uh, where is the source located? Who are the authors? In case you want to say, hey, you guys, you have something that is broken. Please fix it. And whatnot. All right. So I uh, think that now that we have Glacelist installed, or at least defined, this should resolve the plugin and install it. There we go. And launches the application. And here's our list. All right. If I double click on it, nothing happens yet. But at least we know there is this element inside the list. So let's, the next step will be make sure that this is uh, working. That if we double click on this thing, we display information on the form. That is the next step, number eight. In the view, this is standard swing stuff. We're just adding event listeners to our JList instance. This is at JList. So we first said that the selection mode has to be single. And if I press a key and the list is selected, and if the key is enter, then I will capture that selection. I will at least say, well, the selected index is such. Or if I double click on the list, I will also capture that selection. The selection will be captured in the model using, using this property, which is observable. And here's another AST transformation. This is a fancy way of adding a property chain listener for that particular property. What we have here is the name of a closure. That closure is right there. And the implementation here will be transformed into a property chain listener. So what we're saying with this listener is, if I have a selection, 
that is the selected index is not minus one, then I will grab the object from the contacts list at the, that particular index. If I don't have a selection, then this thing is null. Then I will try for all the properties and try to set on this model the properties coming from the contact, but the contact has to be selected. If this is a null object, then I will reset the property value, reset in the form, or if it's not, then I will just grab the value directly. And that's the only thing that we need to do. So let's run the application once more. And now if I double click on it, we should see the information in the form. And we still have 10 more minutes to go. So let's see, double click on it, and there's the information. Nice. Next step, let's finish the implementation of these buttons. So that means finish it up the controller. Uh, step number nine. <coughs> Let's see the controller. Um, right. We're working with swing. What is the golden rule of swing? We should know this by heart. Whenever accessing a UI component, its properties, or creating a UI component, it has to happen inside the UI thread, the event dispatch thread. Any long-running computation that has nothing to do with the UI has to be has to happen outside of the event dispatch thread. For that matter, Griffin assumes that every controlled action will always happen outside of the event dispatch thread. And this is when we make use of our global AST transformation that I was talking about yesterday. The save action automatically will be run outside of the event dispatch thread. So we don't have to think about that. Good. But in the case of the new action, bless you, this action, uh, it has to clear the current selection if there is such one. And that's it. This is just UI stuff. And because we're talking to the UI, this action has to happen inside the UI thread. This is why I decided to add another transformation here. I'm telling the Groovy compiler, the Griffin compiler, as a matter of fact, that this action should happen inside this, the environment dispatch thread. The same will be true for the delete action, and the dump action will happen outside of the event dispatch thread. All right? Saving a new contact is a matter of defining, finding out if we have a new contact or not. How do we know if it's a new contact? If the index, if there is a selection in the index. <clears throat> we update the properties, and here, because we have to update back the UI, Inside, we execute the following code again inside the UI in an asynchronous mode. This is akin to calling swing utilities in Buck later. If otherwise it's not new, we make sure that the contest list is repainted because even if we change information, that information is changed on the event list, which is published an event, and the next time we do a refresh on the UI, then we will see the changes. With this time, we're telling, we're telling it refresh now. Deleting is a matter of finding if we have a selected index, remove the context from the contact from the list, clear it, and that's it. The repaint will happen automatically. And printing or dumping all the information is just going through the list of contacts on each one of them calling print. And that's it. This is all that we need for the moment to implement this behavior. And what is nice about Groovy is that it's very short and concise. Okay, let's run it again. Doop -de -doo. <clears throat> so let's see, let's create a new one. Uh, some silly names, A, B, and C, D, and F. No validation whatsoever. Save. All right, let's... I will select this guy now and press enter. So it works. I will select now the other one, do a double click. It works. I made a mistake here. It's this, this name is the wrong one. It's actually four A's. Save it. And there goes the update. Wow, it's nice, working. Let's dump all the information that we have at the moment. There are the two elements. And if I have this guy here, 
I will now delete it. And if I print all of them again, let's put some, oh, I cannot put uh, spaces there. There's only one of them. So this application works. Nice. In what? In a couple of minutes. OK. Next, you will think, oh, yes, this application is quite trivial. Now I can actually begin doing more work and make it bigger and add more features. And as I continue going along, uh, there is bound to be some bugs in our code because we're using a dynamic language. We should test these things. And it's a good thing that Gryphon support tests. I think I had them as integration tests. Yes, this one. A regular JUnit test. In integration mode, you will have an instance of the application running on, until certain phase. Every Gryphon application has phases inspired by the JSR 296 Swing Application Framework. A JSR that is sadly dead, uh, but we follow the same uh, ideas. Uh, so we create this MVC group address book, which will create the instances of the controller, the view, and the model for us. We make sure that the model has no values for all of the properties of the contact that it contains. Okay. We make a selection, which change the selected index. That should pick the first element that we know for a fact is already there. And just by binding, we know that this name and this thing should happen. Okay, let's run that. I believe I can run it in Gryphon shell. Yes, so that is test app. It will run tests. Okay. Perfect. I think I can open the test report from target. There's no completion here. Test reports HTML index HTML. And there we go. This is our test. Succeeds. All right. But you have seen, uh, probably you have seen that there are, there's much to JUnit, or to testing in Groovy that just JUnit. For example, Spark, which is really nice. Yes, we have a Spark plugin as well. Uh, I think that is the next step. Yes. And we will see pretty much the same code, but now as a specification. This probably, for some people, reads um, much better in the case that we have preconditions setting up the, our test. Here is our expectation. When we change something else, then we have some other expectations. If I were to compare this and the other guy, the executable code is pretty much the same. It's just the thing that differs is how we arrange it. All right. I can run this guide and we'll have the same result. But um, I can do more. For example, uh, I think that the next step will be adding, uh, yes, I forgot something. <clears throat> what if after running all that I have here, well, let's do clear, run app. Uh, what if I want to add a confirm exit dialog for, uh, to my application? That means probably adding a shutdown handler or shutdown hook, something like that. It's much simpler in Gryphon. If I go here, quit address book, and it asks me, perhaps if I have some unsaved changes, if I want to quit, no, I don't want to quit. I want to continue adding and changing stuff here. Or yes, really, I want to quit, so let's do that. How do we do this? Simple. <clears throat> we go to the configuration directory and we register an event listener. Gryphon has a lightweight event bus. It will trigger change it will trigger events whenever we change from one phase to the other. In this case, I will want to listen to the first event that I can, which is the bootstrap end. I will add a shutdown handler, which is also specific to Gryphon. And this guy can resolve two things. Can you shoot down? And if you shoot down, do something. So what this guy is doing, when it's asked if the application can shut down, it will pop up the dialog with this information. And if I can shut down, then the, the shutdown sequence will continue. Otherwise, it will be aborted. And that this is the only thing that I have to do. 
more things that I can do with this application uh, will be uh, adding coverage support uh, or code now for co for testing my code. I think that for now for this version I have switched to Gryphon one two. Uh, so I will clean my uh -oh, change my version. This one on my handy. Uh, scripts. I should be using GVM, and you should too, to manage different versions of Gryphon or Grails or Gradle. Uh, so cleaning the application should update all the plugins. Let's see that. Oh, it's in master. Yes. This will be the latest one. Come on, really? Seriously? Okay. All right. So it's just one some versions of the plugins, not the Gryphon version itself. Okay. My mistake. This will update some plugins. Uh huh. There is one issue here with a swim plugin. Which well, I will correct in a moment. And uh, the swing version should actually be one one zero. Okay. Now I can run tests with Cobertura because I installed the Coverage plugin. Test app Coverage. And we're almost done with the time. You guys sure you have any questions? I almost done. Um, <laughs> just to show you the wide range of options that we have. And I think that this will be the last thing that I will show regarding this particular application. Uh, uh -huh. There we go. Runs the test again. All of them. Generates a Cobertura report in target test reports, Cobertura index. Here we have the coach coverage, perfect. Or if you like Clover, there's also a Clover plugin. Uh, another thing that you can do with Gryphon, and I know that there are two guys here that uh, would like to test out the JavaFX support. We make use of the GroovyFX project. We have two members of the GroovyFX team in the audience. One of them is Mr. Dr. Russell Winder. The other one is myself. Uh, how can you create a JavaFX project with Gryphon? Simple. Gryphon. Create app, uh, rich dash dash archetype JavaFX. And that's it. So, archetypes in Gryphon are pretty much the same thing as Maven archetypes. They let you bootstrap a project in a different way, uh, but they don't bring the mess that Maven brings. So, forget about that. Now that we have this application hub going on, let's go inside Gritch and do uh, clear. Gryphon uh, Run App. This application is now a JavaFX one. It installed two plugins, GroovyFX and JavaFX. The top level component will be a JavaFX stage. And let's see. Uh, JavaFX has problems setting up the right name of the application, right there. But now we have this. Okay? How can we tell it's actually JavaFX? If I look inside the view, uh huh, Gritch view, the DSL is, looks a little bit different. Now we this guy is <coughs> a stage. Sorry, a stage contain a scene. That may contain an H box and text and some fill and effects and whatnot. These are JavaFX nodes, like we had previously with JavaFX script, which, by the way, I hate with all my heart. JavaFX script, bad, groovy, good. So with groovy effects, these are actually groovy effects nodes. Uh, it's very simple, trivial, actually, to migrate from Swing to JavaFX if you make use of this thing. It's also possible to make use of FXML or just roll, and roll your own Java-based Java JavaFX views if you want to, which, by the way, 
uh, if you want and if you can create an application using just Java, Gryphon create app uh, boring file type Java. It's not actually that I bash Java. I actually like Java. I'm as a Java champion, I also say go Java. And actually, I say go Java. But if I have the option to use Groovy, I'd rather, rather pick Groovy. Uh, boring. Inside here, now I have the controller code is Java, the model, also Java, and the view, also Java. The only thing, it, this, this does exactly the same thing as we did for the first time that we created the address book application. It's just a frame with a label. And, and it's right there. It's just that we know that Java's verbosity level is much bigger than, than Groovy. And if, as a matter of fact, I have counted the lines of code re writing a, gro a Gryphon Java based application versus a Gryphon Groovy based application is three times as much the Java version. I can run it to show you that there are no smoke and mirrors. It actually works. So with this, I think that I'm out of time. Uh, but let, I should let you know that besides Swing and JavaFX, there are other three toolkits supported, SWT. Uh, there we go. It's running. Yeah, it's boring. Uh, we have Pivot and we have Qt. We support different languages, not just Groovy and Java. Clojure, Scala, Mira, Kotlin, uh, Erlang. What is there? Uh, there's another guy that I'm, that I'm uh, forgetting. And when Ceylon is ready, we will support Ceylon. Uh, you should take note of this site, Artifacts. Gryphon Framework, uh, come on, Portal, there we go. This is a Grails application that hosts the list of all the plugins and all the archetypes that are available to you. If you want to run your own Gryphon Portal, you can do it because this code is available from GitHub. You can clone it and be happy and do whatever you want to. We have 196 plugins at the moment. We have eight, nine archetypes, seven archetypes there. And um, yeah, there's plenty of information that you can find out here. So I hope that this talk has been a good introductory talk for you guys that are new to Gryphon. Please give it a try if you do. Let us know your feedback. We have a Twitter account. We have user mail list. Um, more plugins are being added. And as a token, I have some Gryphon pins here with the Gryphon logo and the design of the T-shirt that I'm wearing. I'm, I'm actually not showing the T-shirt because I have a call again. Uh, but it has the, uh, the picture of a Mexican restaurant. And it's a Mexican wrestler because I'm Mexican. All right. So thank you guys very much. And let's go for the raffle.